Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light, and for those of you who haven't seen any of my videos before, over the past several years I've been coaching and supporting people for the police recruitment process. With a good fair deal of success, a good 3,000 plus people are now in the police service as a result of my support, so something I'm really pleased and proud of there. So what's today's video about? Well, over the past couple of weeks, quite a few of my clients, those people who've signed up for my seminars, my one-to-one -one coaching sessions, either in person or on Skype, or who are on my online courses, have uh, come up against one or two little hurdles, which with a little bit of thinking ahead, they could have avoided. But it's one of those, you don't know what you don't know things. So I'm going to try and help you out a little bit here to make sure that you don't fall into the same sort of hurdles by sharing with you the things that you should know before you start the application process. Um, the sort of things that are in the small print, but sometimes you don't catch them, read them, or notice them for any reason. So the first one's qualifications. Uh, one of my clients has done really well in getting into a really tough police force or being accepted provisionally for a really tough police force. Um, they've gone through the assessment centre where they had to get 60% plus. They've done the final interview and completely nailed it. And then right towards the end of the process, the force has noticed that they don't have the prerequisite qualifications to get in. Huge amounts of life experience, but just don't have the right qualifications. So this is something you need to be really wary of, folks, especially now that forces are introducing, um, one by one, they're introducing the requirement to have a degree to be a police officer. Now, just to clear up any um, sort of misconceptions there, there'll be three entry routes. One of them is you have a policing degree. The other one is you have a degree. And the other route is police constable degree apprenticeship. And it's for those options that um, there's some confusion cropping up. So some forces like South Wales Police seem to, although I'm not quite sure how they do this, seem to accept life experience uh, plus some qualifications be, as being a prerequisite for a um, what's needed to go into the police constable degree apprenticeship when someone doesn't have a level three qualification. Now, level three is the equivalent of A-level. Now, that gets confusing as well. So what do we mean by A-level? Do we mean an, one E grade in uh, sociology, as an example, or do we mean two A-levels at A to E grade? So that's something that you might want to clear up with forces because that seems to be causing some confusion as well. Um, another thing that you need to be wary of is that some forces require you to have a A to C in your GCSE in maths and English. So there's one of my clients has a D in maths and has been turned down because they don't start checking the fine detail of your qualifications until the end of the process, towards the end of the process. So that's something to watch, folks. Make sure you've got the right qualifications. And if you haven't, do something about it now, because a level three qualification, you could get the certificate of knowledge and policing. That's a level three qualification. As far as a lot of forces are concerned, it's not equivalent to an A-level. It's an A-level standard, but it's not equivalent to an A-level. Uh, but some forces are accepting that. Uh, and other level three qualifications. So make sure you check first because it's a bit of a maze out there in terms of what qualifications are acceptable and what aren't. Something else to think about is vetting. So a lot of people come a cropper with vetting because they have failed to reveal uh, contact that they've had with the police over the years. Now, there's no point in just saying, well, I, I forgot all about it because they're not interested in that excuse. They've asked you the question um, about any contact that you've had or any warnings or any convictions or anything at all, any of the disposals that you may have had um, or any connections that you may have, either family or friends that have a criminal background. Um, and there's so many of you who are failing on this. And the, the problem is not because you've um, got an issue in the background, uh, that may be 15 years old, or it might have been something you did when you're 13. Um, it's not that that's the issue. It's not the fact that you've got an uncle who's got certain convictions, or uh, your brother who you don't see anymore has got a conviction for uh, assault or robbery. Uh, these aren't the issues. The issue is because you're not declaring it. 
So um, there's quite a few forces out there who are really strict on this. If you fail to declare something and they've asked you a direct question about it, they will fail you on the grounds of integrity, that you're not doing the right thing. So, um, and that's it, that'll be the end of it. There's no point in appealing to say, I've, I forgot about that warning I had when I was 14 years old. I forgot about that juvenile caution I had when I was 15. You, you can't get away with that, folks. Uh, but courses, forces will be um, understanding of the fact that you may have had a bit of a riddled uh, past if you declare it. And the same goes for if something happens whilst you're in the uh, recruitment process. So you get a speeding ticket, declare it. Uh, you suddenly find out that um, your cousin has got a conviction for drug dealing, declare it. Because if you don't and they find out that you knew about it, they will fail you. They will fail you and that will be the end of it. And if you fail for one force on betting, it's highly likely you're going to fail for every force on betting because they will trust the other force's decision-making process. Now, that's not always been the case. Some of my clients have appealed and have been successful in their appeal. But often that requires them to sit down for 30 minutes to, to an hour with someone from the vetting department who will go through their past uh, and look at every aspect of what they're telling them and they'll make a judgment based on that individual's circumstances. And whether their excuse about not declaring something is something that's reasonable or not. Now, in case any of you are thinking um, you'll hide it and they won't know, <laughs> it's not going to work, folks. These are police officers doing this. And the people who are employed by the police to uh, investigate and check on people's backgrounds. So make sure you declare everything. And in case you're thinking that, oh, well, I've got a brother who's got a conviction for drug dealing. There's no chance of me ever joining the police. That's not the case. One of my clients succeeded in the recruitment process for, I think it was Sussex Police. And um, it, she got in, uh, but there's a condition that she cannot ever work in a certain part of Sussex whilst her brother, who she never sees, she doesn't see him anymore, but she can't work in a certain part of Sussex where he lives uh, because there's a chance that she could connect with him and come into contact with him. So the forces let her in, but with conditions. So that's the sort of thing that a lot of forces will do to accommodate people who've got uh, family circumstances that ordinarily would not be acceptable to the police service. So um, good for them. Uh, what else do we need to check on? So that's qualifications we've looked at, we've looked at vetting. Um, something else people worry about sometimes and, and, and don't declare is your financial background. So just because you've got an outstanding payment on your credit card, that does not mean to say you can't join the police. Uh, what they're looking at is things like bankruptcy, bankruptcy and county court judgments. Now you need to make sure of the conditions for the force that you're applying to that they are going to allow you to apply um, if you have a CCJ, for example. And forces will have a time period on the amount of time that from when the CCJ is finished or has been settled to when you apply. So you need to look at things like that really carefully to make sure that you do not contravene any of the conditions of employment, which they set before you. It's like the fine print and it's real fine print, some of this stuff. But if you fail to declare something, uh, again, it will be something which will reflect poorly on you in the vetting process and they're likely to fail you. What else do we need to watch out for? Right, well, um, something, this is rather delicate, this, so how do I put it? Um, no, I'm not going to be delicate about it. Some of you are just overweight, um, and, you know, it's not a crime to be overweight, um, but you're applying to join the police service, and your body mass index is going to be over 30. I know this because I see some of you at the seminars, I see some of you in the one-to-one -one coaching I do, and sometimes I will rather delicately mention it if I can, uh, because what will happen is you'll go through the whole recruitment process. You'll go through the application form, the phone interviews, the assessment centre, the final interview, and then you'll go for your medical and fitness. And it's at that stage that they'll fail you because your BMI is too high. Now, some of you might need to be wary of this because you're perfectly fit, you're incredibly fit, but because of the nature of the fitness you do or the sports you do, your body mass index is still over 30. It's got to be between, I think it's 18 and 30. And um, if it is over because of your sporting ability, that's not to say that you're not fit to be a police officer, uh, but you may need to approach the force medical team and give them an explanation as to why your body mass index is over 30. But for a lot of you, I'm sorry, you're just overweight. 
and you're not preparing for the fitness process. So some of you as well are failing on the bleep test, which is 5.4. It's a real low level on the bleep test as far as I'm concerned, but you're failing on it. Sometimes it's not because you can't do 5.4 on the bleep test. It's because you've not practiced the technique and the instructions that you're given um, prior to the enduring the uh, bleep test. So if you put your foot over the line when you shouldn't do or set off before you should do, you're likely to fail that part and they may not let you redo it that day. You might have to wait, wait three months, six months to, to reset it. And of course, you could miss your recruitment window because of that. So be wary of that, folks. Uh, make sure that your fitness and particularly your body mass index is within the limits of what they are looking for because it'd be, it has been tragic for some of my clients who have got all the way to the point where they've had their medical and they've been told, I'm sorry, you're overweight. And being overweight isn't something you suddenly deal with over the next week or two. It might take you three to six months to lose the weight that's required. So if you need to lose that weight, lose it now. Get out there, start running, start getting fit, start doing cycling, uh, start eating better, start uh, drinking less. Um, it's that old allergy, isn't it? Uh, eat less, drink less, move around more, and uh, you'll surely get to the point where you are fit enough in terms of what they require as part of the medical checks. Um, again, in terms of medical checks, make sure you've not got a condition that would preclude you from joining the police because a lot of people have certain medical conditions that will preclude you from joining the police um, and you won't find out about it until you get to the medical stage and then they'll say, oh, you've got whatever it is, um, you can't join us. This is something that could have caused, uh, you could have found out several months before and caused yourself um, a, a lot of, um, a lot less trouble and hassle in terms of the recruitment process uh, because some of you just aren't going to get in full stop. So there you go, folks. Some of the things that people are tripping over um, at this moment in time. Um, a lot of these things are discussed in my Facebook client only group and in my open Facebook group, which is there for everyone. So please do check out the links below and you can ask to join that Facebook group. Um, and a lot of the questions that are asked there are answered by other people who've been through similar issues, especially in terms of things like body mass index, because some forces will look at an alternative measure. Okay, folks, well, I hope you found this useful. I shall see you at the next one. If you've got any ideas about future videos, please do let me know. Until then, keep practicing. Bye-bye for now.